what I what I what I will say is, um, you know, I've really you you may or may not know that Pete does our podcast for us, so Scale Up Radio, um, and um, so I've been working with Pete on that now, I guess, for probably nearly two years actually. Um, and Pete was introduced to us by, but uh, to me by Mike Gardner. Some some of you may remember Mike Gardner, who sadly sadly passed away. Um, but um, Pete Pete has done a phenomenal job with with Scale Up Radio. Made it really easy to um, produce a podcast, which is now getting, you know, we're up to twelve and a half thousand downloads, something something like that. Around um, I think about forty odd forty odd countries, um, and he makes the process really easy for us to for us to do um and uh, and has been a delight to work with so um so pete if, if without i hope i haven't made haven't made your head too big but um <laughs> uh, and 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 for those of you that don't i'm sure he's going to say but but pete um is and has been for a number of years a, a radio presenter him, himself that's that's what he that's what he's what he's done in his in his adult life although i'm going to say it before you do i'm not quite sure you've made it to your adult life yet oh. pete. but but anyway, over over to you. <laughs> Thanks very much, um, Kevin. Well, that's I really don't know. That was all I was going to talk about, really. Was <laughs> yeah, game yeah. Radio and uh, and that's it. Um, uh, yeah, actually, uh, Scale Up Radio, by the way, thirteen thousand and fifty-seven downloads. Ah, brilliant! Uh, now and is being listened to in uh, forty-eight different countries. So very much a global one. And the top three are the United Kingdom, France and the United States are the, uh, the, the three biggest uh, countries that listen to the, the Scale Up radio podcast. Um, and, uh, you know, I can talk a, a little bit more about that as we go. So um, thanks very much, Kevin, and thanks for the, the kind words. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Scale Up radio was kind of one of my early big clients uh, a weekly producer of podcasts and i've learnt an awful lot about being a business owner and being a podcast producer from the time working uh, on scale up radio and, and certainly from the time that kevin and i first spoke so the company monkey pants productions um, came into being in 2010 and the reason was uh, at the time I was a full-time radio presenter which I'd done for 30 years uh, so I started in fact it was it's 30 years since I did my first professional show this year I started in hospital radio when I was 15 so that's 33 years ago um, and then in a time when you could do that started helping out in different radio stations and presented my first show um, professionally when I was 18 it was just a one-off and then um, I took on my first proper regular show when I was 21 which was a late night show in North Wales and from then uh, up until the beginning of 2017 that was pretty much all I did I was on the radio um presenting for commercial stations i produced um if you live anywhere in england you might have heard of heart uh, this huge national radio brand the original heart was actually in birmingham and was 100.7 heart fm and i launched what was their fourth breakfast show which was ed james ed james at breakfast i helped launch that and produce that show for about six years uh, we launched that in january of 2002 2007 a friend of mine who was working for the bbc said i need a new breakfast show presenter your name's come up come along and join us so that's what i did and at the time the bbc signed me as a sole trader and then hmrc kind of started asking some questions not about me but about the way bbc was treating sole traders as a as a whole and we tend to blame John Humphreys, uh, the man from Mastermind and the man from the Today programme on Radio 4, um, because he has never worked for anyone other than the BBC. He does now. He does some work, I think, on Classic FM. Um, yet he was classed as a freelancer. 
HMRC not that keen on that. Um, so the BBC changed their policy that they would no longer sign sole traders. We all had to create companies. And a lot of my friends created John Smith Productions or John Smith Radio or whatever. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to call it Pete Morgan Productions. I just think it would get lost. Let's come up with something a little bit different. And apropos nothing, it was a, a, a nickname that I'd been given by uh, my then wife. Um, she's still my wife. Why? Well, she's not then wife. She is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> the the future ex mrs morgan um so uh, my uh wife called me monkey pants and that was the name we came up with um it's something i've kind of um fallen in and out of love with as time has gone on i'm i really like the name but i've had a couple of clients that have gone do you know what i I don't think I can go to the board of my company and say we're working with a company called Monkey Pants. Um, but I've stayed with it. We've changed slightly. So you can see the logo uh, in the, the top corner of my window and you'll see that the word monkey has been removed. It's not that it's just pants. So it's just because that would be even worse. <laughs> um, but it's now it's kind of listed as MP Productions and... Um, so we, we've done, I do a little bit of kind of clever branding with that and it kind of depends who I'm speaking to. So I'm not, I don't want to get rid of the name Monkey Pants because I think it really helps me stand out uh, and makes it quite memorable. But um, uh, I understand that certainly at a corporate level, at some of the larger law firms that I've done work with, um, they will treat it as quite a flippant thing. And one of the things I say is, listen, I know, it sounds quite funny. Um, I realised before I put my fake background on, you know, in my background, my bookcase, it's pop culture figures, you know, a little model of Prince who I'm a fan of, a um, the oldie carrots, the stuffed toys that were being sold at Christmas. And I get that that may come across as flippant, but we are anything but flippant about the way we go about our business. So in 2017... I decided that I wasn't going to be a full-time radio presenter anymore. I was going to do something else. And it was a friend of mine from America who spoke to regularly who said, why don't you do something with podcasts? You love podcasts, which I do, I did and do. So that was it. And that was the start of it. So it kind of, again, it's progressed from just helping people learn about podcasts to a company that does full podcast production so at one end and we still do those master classes those webinars those workshops um, i delivered one this morning to the society of authors we've got one next week for accountants that i'm doing uh, like a free webinar for an hour to help accountants get into podcasting but then at the other end there is this full production service and that was one of the services that scale up radio uh, benefited from obviously the pandemic changed a lot of that so once a month i would come along to one of the biz smart meetings and kevin would sit down with three um, business owners and we would record the conversation and then that i would take all of that away i'd record that um take all of that away and then i edit it produce it make it sound the best that it possibly can and then i publish it and that's the the journey that I take the, the client on. There are some people that do what I do. There's a couple of guys in Leamington Spa, a couple in Birmingham. There really isn't that many in the West Midlands at the moment um, that are trading under the barrier, the barrier, the banner of podcasting. But I'm the only one that does the full spectrum of, of offers of if you just want education, I can do that. So if you just want to sit down for an hour and ask questions and pick my brains, I can do that. If you want me to just edit something and then give it back, which is um, something I do for Birmingham Children's Hospital, I can do that as well. Um, but if you want me to, uh, what the majority of my clients do is that they record the audio, they send it to me, I edit it, I produce it. 
and then I digitally host it on a, a hosting site, which means it gets onto Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Uh, and there are other podcast directories out there. There's other places you might be able to hear podcasts, but those are the big three. And really, just be on Apple and, and Spotify, and you've got pretty much most of the audience covered. 2020 was a huge year for Monkey Pants Productions. Um, I think I've talked about this figure before, and apologies if I've, I'm repeating myself, but towards the end of 2019, every day Apple Podcasts were publishing 350 new podcasts. That was every day. In April of last year, so a year ago, uh, that number rose to 3,500 new podcasts were being published by Apple Podcasts every day. Now, a couple of people I spoke to were like, wait a minute, that is, that's incredible. That's too many. I don't know. I'm not going to start a podcast because there's, it, the field is just far too busy. Okay. But you're, you're okay putting a video up on YouTube, which has 452,000 hours every day put up. Um, but you don't want to enter this world of podcasting where it's only three and a half thousand every day. So, yes, there's a lot of podcasts out there, but nowhere near as, as many uh, podcasts as there are videos out there. So don't let the numbers be put off. And the other number I always say is, you know, Apple has got two million podcasts now uh, that are available. Uh, but just under half of them are active. Um, so, you know, there's well over 50% that they've either they've done a few episodes and stopped or it's a limited series. And of those 40%, 75%, three quarters of that 40% won't last more than a month because people just don't appreciate that there is an effort in creating a podcast. Even if you're just doing the content and somebody else is, is editing it and producing it and publishing it, you've got to put time aside to either write the script if you're just going to do a solo episode or you are going to put time aside to interview somebody and arrange that Zoom interview or more and more, of course, over the next few months, it's going to be face-to-face -face interviews that are going to be occurring. And people don't appreciate that and they do a few episodes. Also, and this is something, and Kevin, I hope you don't mind me kind of talking about this with Scale Up Radio, um, it doesn't happen overnight. You don't get an audience overnight um you know it took 12 months i think for scale up radio to start to gain ground and any good podcast will need that people talk about the biggest podcaster in the world is a guy called joe rogan he does a, a podcast funnily enough called the joe rogan show and he just interviews different people he is the biggest podcaster in the world millions of downloads for every episode is now Spotify exclusive. So that's the only place you can listen. And that was a huge um, money deal for both Spotify and Joe Rogan. And people think he happened overnight. He was producing episodes for three years before he became this global podcasting superstar. It doesn't happen quickly. It needs time. It needs commitment. And you need to tell people that your podcast is out there. And all of those things are things that the company helps to do. It really isn't. I'm involved as much or as little with every single one of my clients' podcasts as they want. So Kevin and I were talking and we were looking at download numbers and we were saying we'd like them to go up a little bit more. One of the services we offer is we help market a podcast on social media. We don't do it through biz smart we don't do it through scale up radio we don't do it through monkey pants it's through a completely um disconnected set of social media accounts uh, but they go out and they tell people about these podcasts uh, and we saw a huge rise in the amount of audiences that were that were tuning in and i say it and i know there's a lot of people on here that will say you know we do this and we do that at the moment, it's just me, and it's just been me for four years. Um, thank you. Yes, well done. You should subscribe to Scale Up Radio. It is on Apple and Spotify as well. <laughs> subscribe and follow. 
because you every week great business advice other other podcasts are available yeah no they're not <laughs> that's the difficult thing because of course you know i now i now personally produce and help to publish about 23 different podcasts and then there's a few more that i do and then hand back to the client but out of those 23 podcasts, there's a few of them that kind of cover the same ground. And when you're talking to people, they're like, so what's your favorite? Um, like uh, there's one that talks about uh, like a mindset or a mindfulness podcast. I've got a couple of people that do that. What's your favorite mindfulness podcast? Um, well, <laughs> there's one. And for, you know, there's Be More, which is very good. But there's also uh, Emotional Systems uh, with Dr. Jess Bolton, which is another very good one. So there, you know, there too, you can go and have a look at. Um, as far as business goes, Kevin, then there is only a one answer. And that's uh, Scale Up Radio. Good. Um, so I say we, and that's a good kind of language to use. But it really is just me um, that's kind of built this this business up. And this is the thing. I knew nothing about business when I decided to do this. Um, I had two kind of jobs when I was a radio presenter and producer. One was to open the microphone and two was to be informative and or entertaining. Sometimes you didn't manage either of those, but you did your very best to try and hit that. And that was it. So I never had to think about marketing. I never had to think about sales. I never had to think about networking. Um, I never had to think about 90 day planning. I all of these things are were alien concepts to me um, four years ago. And I've just had to, it's been such an incredibly steep learning curve because at the base of it all is this love I have for this communication that happens with podcasting and a lot of it was born in radio but a lot of it's transferred over to podcasting i think podcasting for what i love about it has the edge over radio um because it's completely for you it, you know i always say it's like a magazine for the ears so whatever your interest is whatever you like to do in your spare time whatever your business is there is a podcast for you if you like sculpting there's a great sculpting podcast uh, that's out there. If you like baking, oh my goodness. I mean, there's I mean, there's at least 10 baking podcasts that are out there. And uh, um, again, apologies if I'm repeating myself with this. I went to my wife and said, I, I need to look for some things that are really dull, that there might be some podcasts about. And my wife's a corporate lawyer, so she knows dull really well. And she said, what about the, um, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, so the FCPA? I mean, it really is it's the dullest thing on earth. There's, I stopped counting at 10 podcasts about the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act that are effectively just audio newsletters about what's been going on over the past month with the FCPA. Um, but if that's got a podcast, anything can have podcasts. And Joe Widdison, what about eating? Yeah, there's loads of eating podcasts, some really good food podcasts. And I'm always surprised when there's a podcast, like with the baking podcast, how can there be a baking podcast when it's such a, um, it's so concerned with the other senses of smell and of taste and of sight, but it works. They talk about the things that they've baked, the things that have gone wrong. Uh, they talk about the shows that are out there. Uh, whether it's the Bake Off, whether it's Nailed It, which is an American program. Um, but there really is something for absolutely everyone. And I love helping people discover that. And whether it's discovering their own podcast as well within their own business or pointing them towards something else that they might be interested in, I'm fine. And I think it's that that makes me think maybe I'm not the best business owner ever because I'm just, <laughs> I really am just like, what? Yeah, just listen to these podcasts. That's what you should be doing. Brilliant. Um, oh, that's Monkey Pass Productions. Thank you very much, Pete. Uh, very uh, re some really good insights into in, into what you do and 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 why you do it as well. So that's fantastic. Thank you very much. So let let's just open the room. Yeah, for a couple of questions, Helen, you got you got your finger up. Yes, please. Can you send me your free hour for accountants? 
Yeah, of course I will. Absolutely. I'll put that. Is it all right if I put that in the chat, Kevin? Is that? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. I will put that. And in. if you think monkey pants is frivolous, I was of the same mind of you when I was deciding how to name my um, bookkeeping business because so many people just use their name yeah. and I wanted it to stand out. So I definitely decided I wanted an animal so that I could have a logo. And my first idea before I thought of Adder for the snake was um, to have dung beetle bookkeeping. We sort your shit. <laughs> <laughs> like you i thought i decided it was a bit too frivolous so uh, luckily for you philip you didn't have to animate a dung beetle you only had to animate a snake <laughs> brilliant Great the event bright link is in the uh, in the chat as well yeah louise um i'm always really surprised you know louise has said in the chat it's got me thinking that i need to listen to more podcasts i'm always really surprised when I meet people who are like, oh, I don't listen to podcasts because it is like, OK, but there will be something for you. There'll be something that you'll be interested in and, and could potentially become obsessed about, um, you know, and whether it's so a couple of my favourites in the moment. One of my favourite TV programmes of all time is The West Wing. Greatest TV drama ever written. I'll see anybody outside who disagrees. Um, and there was a podcast about it called the West Wing Weekly, and every week they would go through an episode of the TV program, um, The West Wing. The podcast started, oh, about ten years after the program finished on TV, and it culminated in a live show in Los Angeles last January, uh, where they did the last episode, and I went along. Uh, I ended up seeing The West Wing Weekly live about three or four times, um, so. Well, hello. But again, with Game of Thrones, there's some incredible um, Game of Thrones podcasts out there. Yeah, bees. Louise, there was because I was looking at one point, at kind of doing some beekeeping because I find it fascinating and I I think I'd love it. Um, and there's some really good kind of beekeeping or bee podcasts or um, nature podcasts as well with some good bee episodes in there. It's worth just go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and type in what you like and Brilliant. have a look through the podcast very good any any other questions for for pete before we move on to jonathan any any thoughts comments questions for pete i think nope. we're i think we're done that was excellent That's fine. i just oh, the only thing i like is obviously being a radio presenter i do have an ego i was used to being on a big stage so i was like I just, um, just <laughs> I just like to, you know, always end on applause. That was it. <laughs> nicely done. Very nicely done. All right. Well done. Well done, Pete. Very good. Right. 